So from selling their quadruple a game to calling gamers toxic and problematic to then apologizing and putting your premium apology for your players to pre-order, Ubisoft got everything in store for us. Like the video if you think there are two genders, dislike the video if you think there are 5,000 genders and suckers are beefing right now. Nobody's stopping man, suckers making videos on this situation left and right. Everybody's covering the story and I want to also show you guys this video as well. But you know the positive that came out of this entire situation is that gamers are reuniting finally. Yeah, I'm seeing everybody's kind of reuniting. I'm seeing my black homies, my brown homies, my white homies, my purple homies. Everybody's like coming together as one and it's quite beautiful to see because Ubisoft is literally pissing on our heads and saying that don't look up it's just the rain when it's not it's not just the rain bro look up it's not just the rain they're literally pissing on our heads and saying that it's the rain but check this out uh oh roll it today is one big mega stuffed video about everything happening over there at woke Ubisoft and their gigantic misfires that just keep piling up from Assassin's Creed shadows uniting an entire nation in hatred to Star Wars outlaws looking outdated and bad when it's not yeah. even out yet Kotaku journalists that gameplay, I've seen the gameplay, bro. That gameplay looks even more bland than a PS3 game, bro. Genuinely, minus this whole crap and all that, bro. Like, it, it looks worse than that. They're getting mad as well and more, so let's begin. Firstly, in case you didn't know, Assassin's Creed Shadows is pretty much getting annihilated by Japanese content creators, fans, and historians a nation over due to its depiction of Japanese culture. The game also features same-sex romances for even mm -hmm. alleged historical figures like Yasuke. Which Crazy, makes man. zero sense because this means Ubisoft is imposing different kinds of relationships on someone who allegedly existed. This is yeah. not only wrong, but... Yeah, like, how disrespectful is that, right? Like, Yasuke is a real person, first of all, and he was not gay, and they made him gay in the game. If he was... If he was gay in real life, then okay, it makes sense, right? We talked about it numerous times, but it's actually true, though. This is insanely disrespectful. It's like, y Yasuke is like, hey, you know, talk about this, talk about that. Ubisoft is like, nah, bro, like, we're not gonna talk about none of that. We're gonna first of all make you gay in the game, and that's it. Oh, that's it. That's what these suckers did, bro. That's crazy. That's but insane, actually man. messed up as hell, too. Because Ubisoft is imposing their own biases and agendas onto someone and using them like a flesh puppet in order to push an agenda. Not to yeah. mention the game has been called out a plenty already for using Chinese architecture, not knowing how flooring or doors worked in that period, and much more. Now the backlash has gotten so bad, Ubisoft has to now backpedal and is issuing a statement to Japanese fans. They said via Twitter, and I quote, To our esteemed Japanese- Yeah, this, this is- <laughs> <laughs> to our esteem what yeah this is something that we actually no let me actually skip that real quick right because this is something we talked about but i want to show you guys this so i actually marked down this uh shout out to the homie endymion as well and uh i guess shout out to alisa Mercante for providing us with the the sauce Check here's this. what she said maybe just say you soft apologize of course kotaku's woke editor-in-chief alisa Mercante had to chime in and here's what she said maybe just say your racist response to a video game is indicative of moral decay get bent instead of this Alyssa is obviously frustrated that every single time her side of the aisle tries to get away with nonsense, the public just destroys them. For someone who is so confident in their ideology, it's astounding how often it fails, gets dismantled, or made fun of on a regular basis. Also, Alyssa's response is tone-deaf as hell because, as always, activists never actually have any skin in the game. She really thinks it's better if Ubisoft, the company with a lot of money, jobs, and goodwill riding on the backs of Shadow succeeding, believes that it's a better idea to attack the customers further and double down on virtue signaling. You couldn't write something more stupid than the reality that these activists live in. Had Ubisoft done what Alyssa... <laughs> Oh man, like these suck is crazy, bro. Like, holy crap, man. Like, just like looking at this, bro. Like, oh man. Damn. Damn, homie. Alyssa Mercanti here believed was the right move. They would be currently getting swarmed 10 times as hard with negative feedback. It's bad enough already. Yeah, look at that armor, bro. Like, holy crap. Like, look at that, man. That, that armor is crazy, though. Sheesh. Ready that I think a lot of people are not going to buy this game on principle alone. Why in the holiest of hells would you think it's a good idea to make the situation even worse? Again, this is what these woke freaks think because whether Shadows does well or dies, Alyssa doesn't really lose her job either way. So like usual, this is someone who has no skin in the game, so to say, when it comes to this, she will likely get a free copy of this game or something to review. Or maybe yeah. not. I mean, back in 2015, Kotaku confirmed... It's, a, it's the same thing that we talked about, right? Like, th these suckers hire Sweet Baby Inc. to uh, infiltrate, and, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. want games ultimately to be ruined. They want they want to ruin franchises and all that. They want to also drop, like, uh, they want to wokeify the games and all that, push agendas and all that crap, and ultimately, they want to spit on gamers' face. They simply said that they don't like gamers, right? Like, they don't like gamers. They, and, and these suckers like Ubisoft, they're letting activists make their games. You know what I mean? They're paying, first of all, Sweet Baby Inc., okay? They're paying activists. And, and then these suckers are losing gamers. They're losing sales and all that. And, and they, they're not they're they're not getting it. They're they're really this is just like different kind of stupid, right? You're you're letting non-gamers make your games for gamers. 
Like, that don't even make sense, dog. That don't even make sense. Yeah, keep funding them, keep paying them, and at the end, who's gonna lose the job if uh, the, this game does not do well? It's gonna be you. Like, the devs working on this game, they're gonna lose their job. Sweet Baby Inc. and these actors, yeah, bro, like, they're gonna be moving on to the next game. They already got, they already got paid to destroy a franchise. <laughs> they already got paid to ruin your project, your game, right? Like, I, I, yeah, if any dev from Ubisoft is watching, I'm pretty sure, like, you worked your ass off on this game. Maybe some of you even liked working on the game, even some of you were passionate about the game, and yeah, I respect that. I respect the hustle part. I respect that you were, like, uh, you know, passionate about the project, but damn, bro, like, this is not what gamers want, man. You're ultimately disrespecting an entire nation. You're using black people as, uh, as shields, LGBT people as shields, and pushing all these kind of agendas. Gamers don't want it. Gamers don't like it. Your audience, your audience don't like it, and you're paying an activist group to make your games on your behalf, right? And if this game does poorly, ultimately, yeah, you might get, uh, they might kick you out. You might get fired. You might, of course, not concrete, though. You can get fired on maybe your colleagues or maybe, you know, your best friend or your buddy buddy that you were designing this game with. Maybe you're going to stay, but your buddy gets fired, right? Somebody's going to get fired, right? But these suckers, uh, like these activist group, they got a nice payday and they're just going to move on, moving on to ruining another game. We moving on to ruining another game. That's what, what's going on right now that places like Bethesda had already blacklisted them for years. And Ubisoft, during that same time period anyways, was ignoring Kotaku's advances and also refused to work with them. I have no idea if any of these relationships have been fixed almost 10 years later, but regardless, I think the last thing Ubisoft should be doing is listening to anyone who works at Kotaku. Also, by the way, the reason why Kotaku got pretty much blacklisted by Ubisoft is because they leaked Assassin's Creed Syndicate a full year in advance with screenshots and everything before it came out, ruining the reveal of that game. They even revealed that the game was originally called Assassin's Creed Victory until Ubisoft had to go back and change it because of Kotaku's expose. This is not a website ran by professionals is what I'm saying, it's adult pretenders, people who don't know any better and just regurgitate whatever is considered socially acceptable at the time and that's it. I also find it interesting that Ubisoft pleads that nobody goes after the consultants attached to this game, which makes me believe that a certain group is attached to this project. Of course, I'm alluding to Sweet Baby. I mean, firstly, that company was founded uh -oh. by two ex-Ubisoft employees. They have also worked go. on Ubisoft projects before as Sweet Baby and Shadows having same-sex romances, and a gay black samurai is one of its lead characters. It's definitely something that would be right up the alley of all that particular consulting group. I think we can all agree. Time out, bro. Time out. Time out. Time out. What is going on? What is going on? What is... What, what is going on right now? What is going on? So, so yeah, Sweet Baby Inc. is uh, founded by the ex Ubisoft employees. That's friendly fire. That is friendly fire. Yeah, time out. Time out. Time the f out, bro. Agree on that. I would wager if they are attached, we won't learn about that until much later. I would assume Ubisoft knows that if people find out that SBI is involved, it will drive this game's sales into negative oblivion. And I would also wager that Ubisoft is trying to save whatever they can of this project before such news becomes public. I just have a Maybe. feeling in general that many upcoming games that are SBI infected will go out of their way to remove those people's names from the credits in order to hide their involvement. <laughs> but like I said in other videos, it's not hard to tell- uh, Now here's the thing, right? It's gonna be really, really interesting to see how many copies this game sales, uh, sells, right? I wanna know your thoughts on it real quick before I show you like the next thing here, right? Like, yeah, wait for it. Uh-oh, get ready, the drama, the plot thickens, the plot thickens. But seriously though, like, do you think that this game is gonna sell well? Okay, uh, let me know if you think it's gonna, it's gonna sell well. Do you think it's gonna sell normal? You think it's not gonna sell as much or you're gonna, you think that it's ultimately gonna flop? Yeah, there are multiple scenarios. Now, Assassin's Creed is a household name, okay? It's a big franchise. It's known worldwide. And you also gotta factor in, it's getting a lot of marketing. Although it's negative marketing, although everybody's talking, yeah, everybody's talking about the game. That's the point that I'm trying to make. And negativity actually sells, all right? In this case, though, it's it's gonna be interesting seeing now of course like uh, i get very it's very few comments but i still do get very few comments where people are saying that hey man it, it's just game bro i'm gonna buy it and yeah if you if you want to buy the game go for it like this is this if you like it go for it right like i said previously as well if you if you enjoy what you see if you like what you see yeah go for it at the end of the day it's your money right but i'm talking to sp uh, people specifically like if you think that they're using you as a shield uh to push an agenda right yeah, I'm talking to my black homies and, uh, right, uh, if you're playing, they're using you as an agenda, uh, uh, to push an agenda, and you want this to stop, because nowadays it's like every main protagonist, every main black character is gay, right? Let's be real, okay? Like, th that's basically where it's going right now. If you want that crap to stop, I mean, you gotta work with your wallets. If you're Japanese in this situation, uh, you don't like how your culture is being destroyed and mocked like that, 
you gotta vote with your wallet and anybody else for example like I'm, I'm brown right so i'm not necessarily offended but i see the hypocrisy and i see the disrespectful uh disrespect that's going down so if you're somebody that that uh, forget the woke part right like if you look at this gameplay you look at the game and you're not impressed by it and you want games to get better vote with your wallets okay simple as that i'm not even talking woke crap here like you look at the game the game don't look good to you what with your wallet so in hopes for in the future games get better and if you're somebody that's like okay i'm not japanese i'm not black uh i'm not offended i cannot be fake offended right but you're like i, I don't want to see crap like that i don't want them to one day turn on my culture and destroy my culture you don't want that what with your wallet simple as that if you don't care well once again what with your wallets and you like it what with your wallet and go for it get the game right but it's gonna be really interesting to see uh how many copies it sells knowing how much backlash this game is getting and knowing how much drama there has been so let's uh let's find out the sbi is involved because all the telltale signs are already there to begin with and a gay black samurai cutting down japanese men without punity in the name of social justice is definitely something i could see sweet baby being involved in honestly wouldn't even be surprised if shadows start a standard japanese shinobi before they were convinced by sbi to do yasuke instead i obviously have no proof of this yet but if this were true none of it would be really shocking of course as i was making this video more stuff would come out so manga lawyer over on twitter posted screenshots of translations that denounced what one of the yes men of yasuke over at japan has been saying so there's this apparent communist historian in japan named professor hirayama and they're being discredited by other Japanese historians for their portrayal and push of Yasuke. Then okay. one user posted historical documents which prove that Oda Nobunaga had a fascination with extravagant gestures of wealth. One of these translations said, Some people consider Yasuke a samurai because Nobunaga granted him a sword, a house, and a stipend. But I'd like to say a few words. I'll just leave out one example of Nobunaga's regular behavior with people that he liked. On August 15, 1570, three years before he took Yasuke into his service, Nobunaga summoned 15... Yo, August 15 is my birthday, bro. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Right. On August 15, 1570, three years before he took Yasuke into his service, Nobunaga summoned 1,500 sumo wrestlers from Kyoto and Goshu to Azuchi and had them wrestle. So Oda has been documented to be the sort of guy who would flex on others because he could. What sort of dude has that sort of money to get 1,500 fat dudes to come entertain him at his house? Dude was drowning in the money. You really think that he took Yasuke? Hey, hey, tranquilo, papi, tranquilo. Eep. Time out, papi, time out. Tranquilo, papi, tranquilo, tranquilo. He respected him? If so, I got some air in a bottle to sell you if you're that gullible. Another example translated from historians that are fighting against AC Shadow states, the 14 wrestlers were summoned and given swords, wakizashi, uniforms, and 100 koku of land in the feudal domain, and were okay. even given private residences as a mark of honor in the capital and the countryside, should these 14 wrestlers also be recognized as samurai of the Oda clan. So again, the historical evidence proves that Oda was so rich and influential, he was just giving whole-ass housing to people because he could and would also give them salaries, weapons, and such. Ah <laughs> oh, man! Give me free housing too, man! I want my free housing, man! I want my free housing, man! I want my free housing, man! If I was the president, brother, I would give everybody, like, free housing. Like the video if you want free housing right now, man. Yeah, man. Be, yeah, bro, like, uh, yeah, bro, like, times be tough right now, man. Everybody deserves free housing, man. Everybody deserves free housing right now, man. The same way he did Yasuke. Yet these wrestlers were not considered samurai, so why would Yasuke? And then this one also states, Taito, Sukao, Myojin, Hishiya, Sukagoro, Arashika, these are people who don't have a last name, just a Shikona. They have been given more than Yasuke, but will these wrestlers also be elevated for the rank of pages or something? I think they were servants of the samurai family, Yoriko or Otogishu, I believe Yasuke was just one of them. By the way, Shikona is a word that means a wrestler's stage name, so Taito, okay. Myojin, Arashika, etc., those okay. are their stage names when they go into the ring. But they didn't have oh yeah like uh, you know like once uh, tom holland the the actor in spider-man said that oh we were using oh we're using our real name oh i'm peter parker oh no i'm spider-man you know yeah okay i, I, see, I see i see i see i see i see actual last name so they kind of just went by their wrestler names during those times so you know so this is just stating that this is where these men would sit according to oda nabunaga when he was sitting in the same room as them as you can see they would sit far away from him out of respect obviously yasuke by the way is not even the guy's real name it was given to him by oda to signify who he was so it's very likely that yasuke is a shikona or stage name similar to the other wrestlers. And what these okay. historical documents state is that these wrestlers who were given more from Oda than Yasuke ever did were also not considered retainers or samurais either. Meaning that Yasuke was definitely not a samurai. He wasn't even a warrior and was never even really considered Oda's friend. He was quite literally, whether you want to admit it or not, a prize pet of Oda that he would bring out to entertain guests in a rather racist way because he was the only black guy in the country apparently during this time. So ultimately when it comes to shadows, Ubisoft has effectively radicalized and mobilized an entire nation of angry customers across the board with their stupid game. And none of these people are happy or excited for this upcoming woke DI disaster. I would say give pity to Ubisoft, we all know that if they were never called out, they would keep doubling down and doing more stupid shit like this in the future too. So Ubisoft has nobody to blame but themselves, but hilariously enough, this isn't even the only game Ubisoft is getting attacked for. This brings us to their other big upcoming release, which is Star Wars Outlaws, which as of the making of this video, it releases in about a month's time, and it's not looking great at all. IGN recently had an exclusive- You, you know what? It's gonna be interesting to see its sales in a month from now. And look at this game.
gameplay, bro. Look at it. Forget the whole crap. Forget about all this backlash that's going down. Objectively. Be objective on this one. My brothers. Be objective. Look at this crap, bro. It looks worse than a PS3 game, man. I've seen better PS3 looking games, bro. A preview of gameplay from the game and everyone is pretty much confused as to why this game even exists. One user said in the comments, cancelled my pre-order after this footage, thanks IGN. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't blame the guy for doing that to be real with you guys. If I watched this gameplay, I was kinda just confused the entire time. Because the game just looks dated and really unoptimized, people were making fun of the sliding being a terrible animation, and the fact that at one point, the main character shoots a guy with a laser gun that is very loud, only to return to stealth and then mere meters away, other enemies are just walking around as if they heard nothing. This is typical Ubisoft level of AI, I mean anyone who's played recent Assassin's Creed games or Far Cry, they know how poor the Bruh. AI really is and how easy you can manipulate it. Another user even said, can't wait- Man, gamers deserve more, man, like, make online free to play. As a brown man, I demand online to be free on both PlayStation and Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> gamers, uh, gamers need to rise up, okay? Gamers re reunite, okay? Uh, games need to be better like this, than this, okay? Give us, like, real next-gen games. Where are the real next-gen games? Where are the real next-gen games? This crap looks worse than PS3. We had better games on PS3 and Xbox 360, dog. Especially in the era, oh man, games were amazing though. I'm, I'm not talking graphically, I'm talking the content, the quality of the game, the enjoyment, the fulfillment you got. Uh, out of the uh, uh, out of playing those games, right? That era was just ima uh, impeccable, amazing. Even the PS4 and Xbox One era was way better than whatever crap we're getting nowadays, bro. Like seriously, bro, we deserve better than that. Kevin cannot wait to play this game in three years after buying for fifteen bucks. Damn, homie. Wait to play this game in three years after buying it for fifteen bucks. And this comment stings, but it's also true, because Ubisoft's games, more than anyone else's, seems to go on sale almost all the time. <laughs> Nintendo games, for example, they kind of retain their price points, so too do From Softwares or Rockstar for long periods. But Ubisoft's appreciative value- and, and, and I can speak on, like, Call of Duty as well, like, Call of Duty is something that people always complain about, but th that game is still the best-selling game every single year. And I would say, like, uh, Call of Duty, let's be real, you cannot compare Call of Duty with Ubisoft games, like, two different games, and uh, I would be honest, uh, Call of Duty games are better than Ubisoft's. <laughs> Yeah, minus like the the minus of microtransactions and all that bullcrap. But I'm, I'm talking objectively from a standpoint of quality, the graph, the graphics and all that, right? Like it's it's better than all this crap that we're getting. And of course, like if, you know, those games sell like crazy, so they never lower the price. There are so many older games out there that are still full price, or let's just say fifty or sixty bucks when they should have been twenty bucks by now. Y you feel what I'm saying? Like even ten bucks. Yeah, but they're still selling it for 50 60 bucks even to this day because they know uh, That it's a brand. It's a big brand and uh, suck is gonna buy it if suck is gonna buy it suck is gonna buy it There's no need to lower the prices right like that But but in the case of Ubisoft they have to they have to lower the prices because ain't nobody buying it Ain't nobody but this time it's gonna be interesting because it's getting a lot of uh, Backlash and a lot of uh, negative marketing right a lot of eyes are on this game Let's just say of their games. It seems to fall off a cliff the moment they come out Honestly, if you just wait till fall this year, Outlaws will already be like 60% off, I guarantee it. It's an Ubisoft game. Plus, it just doesn't look very great at all. This other user said, is this another quadruple A game? The explosion effect that was worse than the Uncharted 2 that came out in PS3 is amazing. A little broken English here, but we got what they were saying. And yeah, I agree. Actually, while I was watching this, I started to get Uncharted 2 flashbacks, but not in a good way. Like for comparison's sake, remember this Outlaws game is next gen or current gen only. And then here's Uncharted 2 upscaled yeah, on PS5 that. recently. And remember that Uncharted 2 came out in 2009. The game is almost 20 years old at this point. Holy. Yet somehow, it looks so much better. It's more vibrant and dynamic than Outlaws is. How the hell does a PS3 game that got upscaled for PS5 look as good as this, yet Ubisoft is releasing this in 2024 for full price? These other two yeah. comments kind of just seal the deal, which say... How oh, does Uncharted 2 is gonna be forever a goatee, man. Like, that that game is one of my favorite Uncharted... Uh, one of my favorite games, uh, PlayStation games in general. It, wonderful story. Uh, and for the time, it was light years ahead. And even to this day, you can play that game and you can enjoy that game because it's really that good. Uncharted 2, Uncharted 1, I love that too. I love all the Uncharted games, but if I have to pick one, I would go with Uncharted 2. Uncharted 4, of course, was really, really good. But the only thing that I didn't like was uh, it had like such an open field, right? Such an open field. Not super big fan of that. Uh, uh, I know like uh, some of you guys would prefer Uncharted 4, but I feel like that Uncharted 2 was just concise. It was just uh, very punchy, let's just say. You know, something was happening, happening, happening all the time. Whereas Uncharted 4, Uncharted 4 was more like, let's just say, if I want to explain it very easily, it's like open world. Yeah. 
and, and the game, honestly, other than that, I got no other criticism. The story was amazing for Uncharted 4, so I, I liked all the Uncharted games, but if I have to pick one, Uncharted 2, man. How many of you guys played the Uncharted franchise? Let me know which one is your favorite for sure. Save 80 euros in 10 minutes and 10 solid minutes of don't pre-order energy. This preview is going over horribly. I mean, it's ratioed into oblivion in terms of dislikes and likes as well, but all the comments are just echoing the same sentiment, which is that nobody is excited for this game. It's yet another open world by the numbers third person shooter game where you play another strong female character yet again. At the very least, allow players to change strong, independent the character to mail if they want, because I don't want to play discount Sigourney Weaver mewing 24-7. But I mean, Ubisoft is rightfully pissing their pants. I mean, this insider gaming article tells it all. Ubisoft has put more money into marketing Star Wars Outlaws than any other game. This just oh. means that Outlaws is already costing Ubisoft a crap load of money already, basically. Yves Gilmont, who was Ubisoft's CEO, said this during an earnings call. What we are factoring in is a strong launch for Star Wars Outlaws. That's the fact, and it's among the most awaited games of the industry this year and reflecting a really strong positive community sentiment. And also the fact that we are coming with the biggest marketing campaign ever so far for a Ubisoft game. Oh boy, gotta Bruh. love the swindling of the CEOs. Bruh. If this were true, it wouldn't be getting attacked like it is right now. This also comes in where Ubisoft stock <laughs> yeah. has dropped 12%, although they have made about $20 million more in this quarter than they expected to do as well. When asked to comment on Ubisoft's future, here's what that same CEO had to say, and I quote, In a selective market, we delivered a strong start to the year with net bookings above target, reaffirming that we are on the right track. The quarter notably saw the launch of X Defiant that is off to an encouraging start as we continue to grow the audience at a steady pace and plan a quarterly roadmap of content that will allow us to firmly establish the game over time. We also held Ubisoft forward. I wanna see, I wanna see, I wanna see, I wanna see, bug it, that is always a key event for our teams and players during which we showcase content that is very much aligned with our strategic focus on our two key verticals, open world adventures and games as a service narrative experiences. The gameplay we presented for our two highly anticipated upcoming premium titles, Star Wars Outlaws premium. and Assassin's Creed Shadows, was not only pre premium guys, premium man, premium man. This suck is crazy! Praised by players and critics alike, but also highlighted the cutting edge capabilities of our game engines. We also presented a strong pipeline of content that will continue to feed our live titles. As we progress through, all our efforts are focused on successfully launching our promising new releases and positioning them as long lasting value drivers for Ubisoft while continuing the transformation of our organization. We are excited about the future and confident in the sustained progress of our turnaround through the year. End quote. It seems oh. like Eves and his yes men are positive about the future of Ubisoft, but it honestly seems like they're two big tentpole releases for this year. It's gonna be really interesting to see the sales, man, but recently this also went down, man. This this entire Dr. Uh, Doctor Disrespect and Chris Tyson situation, insanity, going nuclear level. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this or not. Uh, check this video out. If you've already seen it, then check out the video on the left.